Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thank God again for His grace. As always, I would like to say that no one can make himself alive without Jesus. Uh, before we start the program, I would like to appreciate the work which is going on under the Special Committee of Counseling and Prayer. You are doing a good job. May the Lord bless you. We have some few prayer requests for the family matters. And before we begin the program, I would like to every one of us to pray for these needs. I will mention them and then we'll raise up and I'll give you some few minutes to pray for these prayer requests. Just deep within your heart. And then after a few minutes, I will conclude and then we'll begin our program. We have some few prayer requests here. Uh, one is needs prayer for the husband who has left her and remarried. For sure, this needs God's intervention. This needs the Holy Spirit to counsel the particular person because to go through this is not easy. You know, when someone is going through some difficulties, it's easy for us to tell them that keep going. We are together. We are praying for you. But it's another thing to go through it. It's the only this person who knows how tough it is. So what we can do is really pray for these people. Another one is needs for uh, prayer with the husband who has returned home after abandoning her and the children and he's back empty-handed when she's facing troubles with her business going bankrupt. Needs prayers for her daughter to grow in Christ while still in school. Needs prayer with the husband, I will not mention the name, as they are facing challenges in their marriage. Praying for the husband who is infidelity. Needs prayer for her child. Needs prayer for her relationship that seems to be uh, that seems not to be working out. All these people need your prayer. Can we stand up and pray for our friends? Just a silent prayer for one minute and then I will conclude. Father in heaven, thank you for a privilege of prayer you have given us. When the world is suffering, they don't know where to place their burdens. You have given us the privilege of prayer that we can come before you and present our requests. This evening, Father, we are not praying for ourselves. We are praying for our friends who are going through tough times. Behold, Lord, we have mentioned some of the requests they are praying for. But we know that is just a summary of what is going on. But because you are our Father who can read deep within, may you touch everyone. May you touch anyone who is going through tough times in family, in anything. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your hug as father. Let them hear the words from your mouth that you still love and care for them. I thank you because you are going to do more than we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to just give you some hints of what happened uh, last evening. We say remain in Eden. And the word Eden has a lot of uh, meaning, as we, we have seen. Uh, Eden, the Bible says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Eden 
itself has a lot of meanings. And I say that it can have a meaning of delightful, joy. But also the word Eden can mean presence of God. Presence of God. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desire of your heart. That's what I ended yesterday here. I said, delight yourself in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Dr. Chid has been presenting something has to do with depression, stress, and so on. If you want to have true joy, you must draw this kind of joy from God himself. Hallelujah. God is everything. Don't destroy yourself with worldly pleasure, but remain in God's presence where there is true joy and pleasure. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes people think that you, you'll, you'll feel good, you'll have joy after taking alcohol. But let me tell you this. When alcohol is over, problems are still there. It doesn't remove problems. You may think that maybe when you smoke marijuana, ganja, you'll be okay. But when it, it's over, problems are still there. Every single person should know this. God created you to work. Hallelujah. Yesterday I've been talking about this. Why am I insisting this always? It's because, as I said, we have a kind of generation which needs things for free. We have to tell them this. God created you to work. Genesis 2, uh, verse 17, Good News Bible says, Then the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and guard it. These two things. You have to cultivate things and guard things. You have to protect the things. One of the greatest blessings God has given you is work. Hallelujah. Work is not a curse. You know, when people are looking at you, you are digging somewhere, you, you have a very big shamba, you are working there, they say, this guy is cursed. You are blessed. Hallelujah. By the way, when you stay just at home without doing anything, you begin to die slowly. Yes. You remember Mrs. McFinley was telling us that if you want your muscles to be strong, you have to exercise. The same thing, if you want your, your brain to be strong, you have to exercise thinking and reasoning. Let me talk to some people who are in school. I don't know here in Kenya. But we tend to believe that mathematics is tough. I see someone says, Pastor, it's true, it's true, it's true. <laughs> it's not tough. Mathematics is very easy. You know quadratic equation. The problem with my mathematics to me is when they tell me to find the X. <laughs> you hide the X and then you are giving me a hard time to find the X. But in our daily life, we need mathematics. Hallelujah. There's some, those uh, short videos in social media, they made them to despise mathematics. And one of them says, mathematics teacher, you say that I will not go anywhere. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> you have to send to Dr. Chid and then you will see it. It, it is here in East Africa. Mathematical teacher, you say you will not get anywhere. Where am I now? 
But in reality, the main purpose of mathematics is to train your brain to find solutions. You'll never tell me that mathematics will teach you how to cook things. No, 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 no. Mathematics help you to train your brain. So anything that makes your brain lazy is not for you. If I was in a position of making decision for the government, I will say this. I don't want calculators in schools. Calculators kills the brain of our young people. They don't know how to calculate. Now, every, even right now, if I give you a very simple equation, you will find calculator in your mobile phones. If I'm telling you that I have 100,000 Kenyan shillings, just give me an answer for this question. 20 times 5 over 10 times 2 divide by 6. <sighs> May the Lord help us. One of the greatest blessings God has given us is work. Hallelujah. If you sit in the office for one an hour without standing up and walking, the bloody flow in your brain is not enough to make you think in a good way. So what you have to do is this. Just set your watch. After one an hour, if you want your brain to work properly, after one hour, just stand up and walk for just a few minutes. And then go back to the desk. Keep on working. The brain will work faster. Hallelujah. When you get back home, just do some gardening there. I don't understand. Maybe you may help me tonight to understand this. When you grow flowers at home, you water them, you keep them, and the same time, you go to the market to buy sukumawiki. No, you may say, Pastor, I I'm not getting you. You grow flowers at home. Are we together? You water them, you keep them, but you will never eat them. And the same time, you go out there to buy greens, sukuma wiki, spinach, Chinese, pumpkin leaves. Are we together? And then at home, you have some few flowers there, which you'll never eat. What am I saying? You better grow sukuma wiki at home. Hallelujah. When you come back, you may exercise by gardening them, keeping them, watering them. You, you are doing exercise, but at the same time is a productive exercise. God gave Adam work before marriage. Don't marry if you are not working. Mm -hmm. Some of you think that I'm talking about employment. No. I'm talking about working. This is not employment. Some of you, you are thinking that you are working, you are going to work, but you are going to job. There is a difference between work and job. They are two different things. Job is something you are doing to get money, but you don't love it. So you wake up in the morning, where are you going? I'm going to job. I don't love it, but I have to go anyway. Work is something you enjoy. 
Hallelujah. I don't feel any burden preaching. I'm enjoying it. But if you find when you are told you have to go to preach and you are frustrated, a lot of stress, that is a job. It's not a work. Remember when I was talking to young men for the first time here, I said that you have to find your area of concentration. You have to find who are you. What can you work for? Are you working or you are doing job? Every single person should work before thinking of marriage. God does not give you any duty without equipping you with everything that is needed to perform. You have to keep that in mind. So if there is anything you want to do, you feel good doing it, then ask God, can you open my eyes and see what have you given me to make it happen? Because God has given you everything. Ellen White says, to every man, God has given his work according to his several ability. God has the measure of our ability and knows just what to lay upon us. Of the one who is found faithful, the command is given. Entrust him with greater responsibility. If he proves faithful to that trust, the word is given again. Trust him with still more. Hallelujah. The land is there. It has everything you need. It is you who must cultivate it in order that it will produce the required fruits. Hallelujah. Um, one of my work, not job, <laughs> is training people who are doing marketing. I'm, I'm teaching um, marketing psychology is, is one of my, my work. Um, I do tell people that you can sell anything if you will know how to convince people. Anything. The same product, it can be there. The same product, it can be here. But I can sell it in higher price than you just because I know how to explain it. Are we together? So, if you want to do anything, if you want to prosper, don't think about getting prosperity out of the land. The land has everything you want. Let me give you one example. I think I said it, but let me repeat it anyway. If you have something like 100,000 Kenyan shillings, and you will not use this money for about five years, it is foolishness to put this money in bank account. You are giving other people profit. But the same amount of money if you will buy a piece of land, are we together, and leave it for five years, and you come back and sell the same land, you will get five times profit than a person who put the money in fixed deposit. Can you look your neighbor and say, are we together? Your brain has everything. God has given you everything in your brain. The problem is we don't want to make our brain work. When we find any difficult, you say, I'm tired. I cannot go on anymore. This is so tough for me. I said, whatever word you speak to yourself, it will happen. Don't allow anything called fear to control you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear defeats many people than anything. 
Don't allow it. Think out of the box. I, I feel so happy when uh, I travel anywhere and I see God's fearing people owns big businesses. When they say, Pastor, have a look. This is my business. This is my school. This is, I say, wow, this is what we want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young men should have broad ideas. That's Ellen White. Mind, Character, and Personality, Book 1. Young men should have broad ideas, wise plans, that they may make the most of their opportunities. Hallelujah. Catch the inspiration and courage that emitted the apostles. John says, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. Hallelujah. And the word of God abideth in you, and he have overcome the wicked one. There's something I want you to get here. Just let's repeat the first sentence. Young men should have broad ideas. Don't talk about small things. You fast and pray. And what are you praying for? A bicycle. Why? What is that? A bicycle? Do you know what kind of God are you worshipping? I remember one day I was in Mwanza teaching the same things to, to, to young people there. And then uh, I, I was in the office doing some counseling with church elders there. I don't forget this story. Some of you, maybe you have heard it. And then one person, a uh, young man entered the office, said, Pastor, I just want to, to pray for me. I said, what do you want? He says, I, I have a plan of owning a very big business here in Mwanza. Um, the office which has to do with transactions and pesa and so on. And my plan is I want to have a big business to the extent that I cannot count that money and I'll have to hire an accountant. Pastor Mark Finley said here, the problem is not money. The problem is if money will control you. That's what we avoid. You have to control money and not money controlling you. And then I prayed for this young man. And when he went outside, church elder said, Pastor, I know you are a counselor. I know you encourage people, but sometimes my pastor, you have to tell them reality. I said, what's wrong with this? He said, pastor, this young boy is only standard three. How can he own such a big business? Then I said, elder, I don't know, but God knows. After two years, I went back to Mwanza. The same person said, Pastor, I am not here for prayer. I am here for thanksgiving. Let's go together and see my business. Hallelujah. And when I went there, he has a very big business. And then he said, Pastor, come and see the accountant who is counting money for me? <laughs> and then I went to see the person there. I asked him, what's your education? Say, I have a bachelor in accountants. The boss is a standard three. <laughs> Go back to this book. Forgive me this statement, if this statement will offend you, because I know I'm talking to every denomination here. But a special Adventist. Adventist young men, God will judge you maybe more than others because you have everything but you don't use it. This book is an, in Adventist books. Young men should have broad ideas. Are we together? Wise plans.
that they may make the most of their opportunities. You have a lot in your brain, but the problem is your mind. Listen, Ellen White says, but young men, if you gain ever so much knowledge and yet fail to put that knowledge to a practical use, you fail of your object. If in obtaining an education, you become so absorbed in your studies that you neglect prayer and religious privileges and become careless and indifferent to the welfare of your souls. If you cease to learn in the school of Christ, you are sailing your birthright for a mess of portage. Talk about education talk about intelligence, talk about everything, but at the end of it, you have to go down at the feet of Jesus. Keep a watch. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Make sure you take care of what you produce. You can produce more if you keep what you have in a proper way. Some of our young men have or young people, you, you have good things, but you don't know how to keep them. You have to keep them. A cow can produce more milk if you keep it well. You may have a good cow, but if you don't keep well, you will get less milk. Is that right? You are working somewhere. Maybe it's a job and not your work. Whatever. Even Jesus himself. His work was to die on the cross for us. But before going there, Jesus was a carpenter. And that was a job. Are we together? There are some things in life you will have to do, not because you love them, but because they will help you to reach your destiny. You will never stay there for a long time. But learn how to keep them. We sin against ourselves when we are satisfied with enough to eat and drink and to wear. Oh, let me repeat again. That is Ellen White. We sin against ourselves when we are satisfied with enough to eat and drink and wear. We sin against ourselves. Hey, you say, ah, Pastor, it's okay. So long as I, I, I get food, so long as I have something to wear, that enough is not enough. God created you to be a blessing to others. How can you be a blessing to others while you have only things to eat for yourself? You have to get more than enough so that you can bless others. Hallelujah. 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 God has something higher than this before us. When we are willing to put away, away our selfish desires and give the powers uh, of heart and mind to the work of, of the cause of God, heavenly agencies will cooperate with us, making us a blessing to humanity. When you pray for something, God, give me, give me. Why, why do you want God to give you what you are praying for? If you are praying for the sake of having it for yourself, God will never answer such a prayer. But if you are praying for the sake of being a blessing to others, God will give you more than enough. Hallelujah. Use the freedom wisely. Maybe I will end up there after explaining this. Yes, we have freedom, but use it wisely. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. That's a freedom. God has given you freedom of choice. Eating is not limited into food only. It includes what we get into your mind too. 
I told you, don't swallow everything. Don't read everything. Don't watch everything. Some videos and music are intended to destroy your mind. Yes, you have a freedom of going to YouTube, open YouTube. You have data, you have internet, you have everything. But you have to control your mind. You have to control your eyes. You have to control your ears. Not everything you see is for you. Hallelujah. Whatever you read or listen will change your behavior and then shape your character. You have to be very careful in this. Ellen White says, Oh, that everyone might realize that he is the arbiter of his own destiny. Your happiness for this life and for the future, immortal life, uh, immortal life lies with yourself. If you choose you may have associates who, by their influence, will cheapen your thoughts and your words and your morals. Let me say this. Not everyone should be your friend. Yes. You have to limit yourself. And by the way, if you avoid some people in your life, it is not because they are bad people, but they are not for you. You have to put boundaries. Hallelujah. Don't touch. Very important one. Don't touch. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat, you eat of it, you shall surely die. Every man should know the danger of touching what God forbidden. Hallelujah. Don't touch. Young men, avoid alcohol. Avoid drugs. Avoid marijuana. Avoid what? Just mention them. Avoid. Don't touch. Don't even try. They will tell you, just touch. Don't touch. God said, don't touch. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't touch. Listen for the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time again, Father. Thank you for the wisdom from above. Thank you, Father, because every day you are giving us new things. And we are ending up this evening by saying, you told us, don't touch, and we will never touch. Whatever you told us, don't touch. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.